Welcome to Bible Reader Companion. Our Bible reading this week is 1 Peter chapters 1 through 5, 2 Peter chapters 1 through 3, and John chapters 1 and 2. Our memory verse this week is 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, which says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We've been looking very closely at this context this week. We've used this as our study each day. We've learned a number of things. We've learned that with God, time means nothing. We've learned that the flood was given to us as a very real event to remind us of the judgment that God can bring swiftly and completely on this world. We looked at the fact that the judgment that's coming is far more severe than the flood. It's a final and complete judgment of this world. And we looked at the fact that that should be motivating us to change our lives, to repent, to live in holy conduct and godliness. And now we want to look at one last thing as we close out the week. We want to look at why this is, can be a positive for us. Wait a minute. You talk about the judgment of the world, the end of our lives being something positive? Certainly we can. Because the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And in verse 13, Peter wraps up this thought with this. Nevertheless, verse 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and new earth which in, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in, by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider the, the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom to, given to him, has written to you. The reason that we can look forward to it is we understand that when this world is judged and when we leave this world, it's not the end. When he talks about a new heavens and a new earth, there are those who have taken that to mean that God is going to literally create a new physical earth and a new physical heavens. That's not the idea. The idea, if you go and read the things that he talks about with Paul, is that it's a spiritual place. You, you realize that where we will be when this life is over is a place that isn't bound by the physical limitations of this world. It's a place where we will live for eternity, free of the bonds and the sickness and the pain associated with this earth. So while it is a warning, the fact that God will continue to hold his promise and that he will, in fact, come and bring judgment upon the world. For those who repent and conduct themselves in holy conduct and right and godliness, it is a promise of a better place to come. Every time that you cry, every time that you're heartbroken, every time that you see others in pain and burdened down with sickness and the grief and burdens of this world, Remember that those who will live in Christ, who will find his salvation, have something much better waiting. So we can read this, and we can look at this as a passage of negative, of the coming judgment of the world. We can read this passage, and we can say, thank you. Thank you that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise to some count slackness but his long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That God has given all the same opportunity and wants men to come and be saved and enjoy his salvation and enjoy the new heavens and the new earth that await. The spiritual heavens and the spiritual earth that are not bound by all the griefs and sorrows of this world. Thank you for thinking on these things with us this week, and we hope you'll join us again next week. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for more content like this.